right, onwards to Fuchsia. Wonder if the color the town turns into on the emulator will be closer to its actual shade than the shade of green we got for Celadon. Yeah, that's next on our list of places to hit. Wish I could say I'm looking forward to it, but then I misremembered how dealing with Lavender Town felt. At least I'm not dreading it as well, that's got to be worth something. I suppose it was only a matter of time before one of these poison types managed to poison one of our team members. Ah well, may as well give our guys some practice fighting than surviving while we run to the Pokemon Center. After all, our next gym is going to be the poison-centric one. Sure, Neo can do quite a bit of damage to poison types, plus Phyllis and Kohaku are completely immune to being poisoned. Still, it wouldn't feel right to completely shut down Koga when we get to him. It's not like we completely shut down Erica when we got to her with both red and blue teams. Just one more for this guy, then it's back to the Pokemon Center for now. Well, since you have a wheezing problem, let's get Dr. Neo to have a look at you. I know, not an especially good joke, still we're 47 parts into this LP. I think this far in, I'm allowed to throw in some garbage quality jokes on occasion. Well, if you were riding a pedal-run bicycle like you're supposed to on this road, you wouldn't be at risk of burning, now would you? And if you're gonna... And if you like going downhill so much, why are you stopped in the middle of the hill? I know, I know, it's just another line that you're not supposed to think about. I've got the distinct feeling my brain has been turned off for quite a while in this game. Yet another reason to take my time finally getting the second generation ready for commentary. As fun as the overall experience is, there is there are just some things that just irritate me around here, and unfortunately, world building and characterization are among the things this series doesn't go out of its way to really improve all that much around here. This isn't even a bloody highway! At least in the anime, there was a drawbridge our heroes had to ride over while also trying to deal with a biker gang. A gang that for some reason also had some connections with the ever-famous Jesse and James, which oddly reminds me. Am I wrong, or did the anime seem to do more to develop the recurring villains than the various characters following the hero? Sure. Brook and Misty had more to them in the anime than uh, they did in the games, but that isn't much of a bar to jump over. If anything, I think we learned more from the typically ineffectual villains than the main cast. Indeed, and now I need to go to the hospital again to deal with smoke inhalation. Oh, we've got an adventure at the moment, I assure you. We're approximately halfway through it, in fact. I just wish there were more proverbial spices added to this adventure, that's all. It's certainly worth going through at least once, but there's very little to draw you back into this specific game, other than a combination of nostalgia and wanting to come back to this world, which... 
There are plenty other games you can do that with. It's actually rather surprising just how many of my memories of this game were either exaggerated or drew on things from the other media at the time, from the anime to the manga that, while I did get fully into, I still read a decent amount of and felt some aspects clicked into place just right. Well, if you want exercise, may I suggest actually moving from that stationary spot for more than a yard or two? It's constantly moving around just has this ability to add to your leg muscles, I say. Speaking of muscles, I'd say we're probably going to be reasonably leveled up by the time we get to Koga. Not that I remember just how high-leveled he's going to be when we get to him. Annoying, but it's not like those four hits were even half as strong as our single shot. Probably why I don't even bother with multi-hit attacks outside of maybe double kick. Again, really wish there was some in-game text to tell you just how likely moves are to hit or have extra status effects after landing. Nice one, Garm, though we're probably gonna have to run to the Pokémon Center yet again. Yeah, definitely pushing Captain's luck a bit too far here. Not a surprise, but hey, you got pretty close to finishing this fight. Pretty impressive in my book considering we usually had to pull him away when a joke showed up in the previous clip. Going this far into this overall battle? How is that a workout when we were just telling our Pokémon what to do instead of actively participating? And why am I even bothering to complain about the lack of logic in his lines when it was just another random dialogue for the sake of giving him something to say, not anything with any actual meaning? many trainers left on the cycling road at this point, not after all the trainers we've already defeated there. Why do I keep checking what some of these signs say when I've already read them? I swear, I'm losing my mind this far into the game. Maybe, but there's still enough similarities between those Pokémon that outside of maybe Ash's Pikachu, you know what you're getting into when you see one if you've dealt with any others of that type and species. Okay, apparently the last guy was the last guy for this road. Good to know. Uphill or downhill doesn't really matter to us, since it's not like we can actually get tired from all the biking and walking. Hell, Jack will never sleep, eat, or take a piss until he is champion. And even just considering the amount of in-game hours have passed, that is downright terrifying, seriously. If you've ever thought a Terminator was scary, you've clearly never tried to imagine being someone who got in the way of a protagonist somehow. Well, it's 
certainly been a while since anyone sent birds at us. I was starting to think they were gonna have a style like bugs have, for the most part. This bird keeper should really be fun for Marvel Pack to deal with. Right, bring on the birds. We've got plenty of stones. Not really a fan of mirror move, mostly because you have to take the hit before you can send one back at the other guy. Though it doesn't help that sometimes, you just don't have the stats to really give that move a lot of punch to it. Sure, the fact that most of the attack moves our team has, our normal type, kind of screws us over whenever we're dealing with a ghost. Still, outside of Lavender, ghosts are pretty rare, and normal does pretty solid damage to all other types, even the ones that resist it, so... <sighs> eh. Yeah. Don't see why I would want mirror move over anything we've got at the moment. Can't really judge that bird call all too well since it was something we just read, not actually heard. Still, considering you only have one bird, I have this distinct feeling that bird call isn't anything especially inspirational. Wait, really? You mean to tell me this bird trainer's only bird is one without wings? Not that I have anything against ostriches, even three headed ones. Hell, a few of the Final Fantasy games convinced me that people riding chocobos to battle instead of horses can still look pretty damn awesome. Add in the fact that his fury attack did a hell of a lot more damage to Garm than I could have possibly expected. I can't even find it in me to make fun of this guy. I'm just surprised that... This is just not the kind of bird I was expecting to see when a man calls himself a bird keeper of some kind. Eh. It's like hearing someone has a pet lizard. Then you learn it's a Komodo dragon instead of a Kim frickin' iguana there. It just catches you off guard. Oh, you most definitely earned that tally on your card, Marbleback. Well, why didn't you also show one of those sea Pokémon? Because I very much respect the fact that you caught me off guard there and made me feel worried for a bit. Granted, he didn't knock any of our Pokémon out, so he's not quite as memorable as the guy with Eradicate in Mount Moon, but still, definitely someone worth remembering. Okay, kind of an annoying spot to put the Pokémon Center in. Still, they were at least kind enough to put it close to the gym. I'm pretty sure Koga gives these people plenty of patience to work with. But before we deal with Koga, may as well finish dealing with the trainers to the west of town. reasonable thing to do, but that would have made more sense to hear from the person who's actually standing in the grass, not one of the two people notably not standing in the grass in this field. Well, that certainly makes up for Garm nearly getting knocked out in the previous battle. Still. That fight has me worried about just how high-leveled Koga's gonna be if a random trainer just barely out of Fusha's border had a level 34 Dotrio. As a side note, does anyone else ever get that annoying temptation to verbally confuse Dotrio with Doug Trio? It's very similar sounding names for Pokemon with three hits. Excuse me for finding that at least a little annoying when trying to keep track of various Pokemon. They are pretty distinct from one another in terms of appearances, even if they both have the three heads gimmick. Huh. 
Ah, and just a few seconds in the grass and we see the earlier form of the fearsome wingless bird. Well, I certainly wouldn't mind having one of those on our uh, team again. I just have to point out the fact that we've only got six slots. It's just... Just... Uh, even just in the first generation, there are so many Pokémon that I would love to have on a team. And even giving myself 12 slots isn't enough for all the ones I like. Oh yeah, Doduo and Trio can actually fly. Despite the fact that they have no wings. Somehow not as strange as Gyarados being flying in water, but not Dragon. Despite the clear Dragon inspiration, and even having the move Dragon Rage. Great, now I've tempted myself to play Banjo-Kazooie. Much like with how many Pokémon I can have on the team at a time, though, there's only so many games I can work on commentary for at a time. And it is a lot faster to play even a long role-player game than it is to comment on a short action game like Max Payne 2. Much less a rather long game like the first generation Pokémon. Well, this seems about as good a point as any to save and call it a day for now. There's a decent number of things to do in Fuchsia, and I'm probably gonna have to check online for a guide through the Safari Zone, if only so I don't have to waste time exploring it, when we could just grab the absolutely critical items in it, then move on. For one thing, I definitely wanted to give Takanabori Surf for the sake of giving our team some more offensive options. And for another, we can't get to Cinnabar without it. Unlike with Ash in the anime, there is no convenient boat. I suppose that's one way to deal with an annoying terrorist crowd. Oh, trust me, we've been taking care of our whole team. That really feels like something we should have heard in the opening hour, not this far into the game. Hell, the lady also has information that we figured out long before we got to this town. This kind of crap really makes it tough to give a damn about what all the various people in the region have to say, as if the throwaway trainer lines weren't bad enough. <laughs> 